Hello friends, hello family, hello faith walkers. God bless you all on this beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, everybody. God bless you all. I pray that you all had an awesome week, a wonderful, wonderful day today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I come to you with Christianity to, with me today, I am listening to the music of Dappy T. Keys, Alone with God, three-hour worship. Today, I do not own the rights to this music, but again, I love listening to this music as I read the Word, study the Word, pray, and seek God. Amen. I am still enjoying my blend of soursop and blueberry tea. And I'm telling you, it just holds such great benefits. Soursop and blueberry. Come on, y'all. It is delicious. It is an awesome blend. It blends well together. I tell you, just to have that hint of blueberry in your soursop. It is phenomenal. And also, with the benefits, it's just really, really good. And so let me just tell you the potential benefits of blueberry and the potential benefits of soursop. Blueberry has the potential to strengthen the heart, increase bone density, and to fight against cancer. It also helps boost the immune system. And so with soursop, there are claims also that soursop has anti-cancer properties that it fights cancer as well. So when you are mixing the blueberry and the soursop, not only are you getting an awesome, awesome taste, <laughs> but my Lord, with some prayer and faith in these herbs, I tell you, it makes our body fight. It gives our body help. Amen. That's what we want. We are introducing things to these bodies that's going to help us to be healthy. Help us to be strong. Help our bodies. Hallelujah. To be good as we go forth in the gospel. Amen. And so with Sarasop also, it can help with rheumatoid arthritis. It can help to lower your blood pressure. It can help with stomach ailments, fever, parasitic infections. Today, what I decided to do was I decided to use some agave. This is our plant-based sweetener. So I'm using agave today and I am, am just allowing a few drops to go down in there first. Just to show you if you want it to you can control the amount of each with each stick you can control the amount of what you want to go down in there but i'm going to go ahead and i am going to cut the top off of this agave stick so that it will just go ahead and, and empty out so that you all can see how it would just go ahead and empty out when i clip the top off there you go there you go look at that and so what i am going to do now is i will use the straw as a stirrer i'm going to add my ice cubes because i want my tea i want it to be iced because we're in the summer months we're in the hot times so Icing our tea, we can't forget. We can still get all the great benefits, but we can just ice these great benefits so that we can still stay cool. Look at how fast that's melting. <laughs> we can stay cool and refreshed and healthy all at the same time. So let me taste it. Mmm, magnificent. <laughs> Do it, Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. But I am going to go ahead and stop 
my music at this time so that I can transition us into the reading of the word. What the Lord gave me today is about how it important it is for us to consult the Lord in all that we do. How important it is to consult the Lord in all that we do. So I'm going to take another sip of my tea. Mm. Let's God sip. Today's primary scripture will be coming from Proverbs chapter 14 and, and verse 12, which says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. I want us to focus on there is a way, there is something, there is, we can have thoughts, we can have ideas, we can have things that may seem right to us, and even we may get the approval of other men but its end is the way of death. The end of the matter will lead us into death, will lead us into a bad situation, will lead us in a way contrary to God's will, God's will for our life or to God's will for the situation. We may be operating in a way that is contrary to the word of God. Even in our ignorance, even sometimes when we don't even know a thing, we can still have to suffer the consequences even in our ignorance, except for God's grace. So I want to take a, take a minute and read some scriptures and I want to go to our patriarch David. Because David was a man who truly sought God. He was always wanting to please God. He always wanted to know what does God say concerning a matter. Now, as a human, he made mistakes. David made mistakes just like we will make mistakes. But we have to, when we make mistakes, we have to then examine what happened. What just happened? And so we're going to see in a few minutes how a situation, it seemed right to David. It seemed right to the people he consulted. But was it right? Was it pleasing to God? Did it have God's stamp of approval? So turn, if you will, with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 13. And the subtitle for this section is The Ark Brought from Jeriath Jerem. Chapter 13. David consulted with the commanders of thousands and of hundreds with every leader. And David said to all the assembly of Israel, if it seems good to you and from the Lord our God, let us send abroad to our brothers who remain in all the lands of Israel, as well as to the priests and Levites in the cities that have pasture lands, that they may be gathered to us. Then let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we did not seek it in the days of Saul. All the assembly agreed to do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of the people. Again, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Verse 5, so David assembled all Israel from the Nile to Egypt to Lebo Hamath to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jerem. And David and all Israel went up to Bala, that is, to kiriath Jerem, that belonged to Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord, who sits enthroned above the cherubim. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart. They carried the ark of God on a new cart, saints, friends, faith walkers, from the house of Abinadab and Azua and 
Ahio were driving the cart. And David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might. Now see, they were celebrating with all their might. Oh my goodness, they were happy, y'all. Oh. oh, with songs, with lyres and harps and tambourines and cymbals and trumpets. I tell you, they had all the musicians there playing the music. Everybody was dancing. Everybody was joyful. Oh, this thing seemed right in the eyes of the people. It was not even a decision that David made on his own. It was a decision that he consulted. He consulted others. And it seemed good to them, right? That's what we read, right? Verse 9. And when they came to the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put out his hand to take hold of the ark, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he put out his hand to the ark, and he died there before God. So now all of a sudden, tragedy in the midst of all this rejoicing in the midst of everything that's going on you know this is a good thing we're bringing the ark back back to god's people back to jerusalem we're bringing it with harp and with lyre and david had consulted with different people and all the congregation along with david thought that it was a good thing to do but then all of a sudden in the midst of all the praise, in the midst of all the moving of the ark, in the midst of all the, the dancing, God's anger breaks out. And he strikes someone in Israel and kills them. The oxen stumbled and Uzzah put his hand out to steady the ark. And God's anger broke out against him. God killed him. Verse 11 says, And David was angry because the Lord had broken out against Uzzah. And that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of God that day. And he said, How can I bring the ark of God home to me? See, we have to have a fear and a reverence of God. We cannot just do things without consulting God. It is a very Serious thing, when we start doing things, even when we have the approval of others, of other men, and we have not consulted and got the approval of God, or we have not consulted God on how to move forward in a thing. It is so important that we consult God. It's okay to consult men, but then after you consult men, consult God also. After you consult men, you need to go back and say, well, how does God feel about this? What does God's word say about this? We can't just do things our way, saints and friends. We have to always do things God's way. Because God's way is the best way. God's way is the anointed way. God's way is the way that leads to blessings and not curses. Verse 13 David did not take the ark home into the city of David, but took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with the household of Obed-Edom in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that he had. So, whereas the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah and he struck him, when they left the ark at the house of Obed-Edom, blessings. God began to bless Obed-Edom's household. For three months, he blessed them. And he blessed everything they had. So that move met God's approval. Whenever we're doing things and we're not being blessed, whenever we're doing things... And, and there seems to be a curse that comes upon it or a diminishing or a decrease, then 
we need to go back and seek God, not just men, but we need to go then before the Lord and say, what is it, Lord? What didn't I do right? Now, David did not continue to just keep taking the ark. David stopped right there. He stopped. He paused. He halted. He did not take the ark any further. Listen, saints, friends, faith walkers. He did not go any further. He stopped right where that ark stopped. He stopped. He took it right on to somebody's house that was nearby. And he did not proceed. We need to learn lessons. Sometimes what happens is we don't take the time to stop, seek God, and figure out where we went wrong. Instead, we want to just keep going and going and going, and we never correct the issue. We keep going and going and going, and then the damage continues to compound. The damage continues because we don't stop to examine what is it that I am not doing right. But because this example that David has given to us to examine even today, it is powerful when we think that we're doing what is right. It is a way that seems right to a man, Proverbs 14 and 12 says. But the end thereof is the way of death. David could have kept going and he could have killed everybody trying to do it his way. But no, he did not do that. What he did, he stopped. He said, we will not. Let's, every, let's stop the partying. Let's stop the praise. Let's stop the worship. And they were sincere in what they were doing. But let's stop everything. Let's put the ark in Obed-Edom's house. We'll figure this out. Let's figure this out. So let's go to chapter, 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And then we're going to drop down to verses 12 and 13. And the subtitle for chapter 15 is The Ark Brought to Jerusalem. David built houses for himself in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said that no one but the Levites may carry the ark of God. For the Lord had chosen them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister to him forever. And David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place, which he had prepared for it. And David gathered together the sons of Aaron and the Levite. Verse 12. And David said to them, You are the heads of the father's houses of the Levites. Consecrate yourselves, you and your brothers so that you may bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place that I have prepared for it. Now listen to what he said, says in verse 13, because you did not carry it the first time, the Lord our God broke out against us because we did not seek him according to the rule. I just want to stop right there, y'all. Oh my God, my God, my God. That's the key. That is the key. This is a key to the kingdom. This is the key to David's issue. David had to go back. He had to stop what he was doing. Even though it was good. He had a good idea. Let's bring the Ark of the Covenant home. Let's bring it back to its place. Let's put it. Let, but he, did, he was not doing it according to God's way. Woo, that's powerful. David was doing it, but he had not consulted the word of God concerning who should carry the ark. And that simple, seemingly simple thing caused death. But David, because he was a man after God's own heart, he sought God. He told, if you read through these chapters, chapters 13, all the way through, you will see that David went back and had them search out the scriptures 
to find out what did we do wrong? Why did God break out in anger against us? And so this is what we have to do as the body of believers. When, when God's anger and wrath continues to break out against us, when we keep trying to do something and the blessing of God is not on it and it's not being blessed, it's not being fruitful, it's not coming forth the way that God gave the vision to us, then we need to go back and we need to check scripture. Hallelujah. We need to go back and check the record and check what did God say to us at the beginning of the matter. And we need to seek God. Lord, highlight, show me where I am going wrong. And that's what David did here. And so when when. David first started moving the ark. It was a good idea. It was a good thing. But because he did not let the house of Levi carry the ark into the city, into its rightful place, God's anger broke out. David himself says, in verse 13, because you did not carry it the first time, he said to the, to the Levites, because you did not carry the ark the first time, the Lord our God broke out against us because we did not seek him according to the rule. Saints and friends and faith walkers, in anything we do, we have to seek God according to his way, according to his rules. What are God's rules? Stop and go back and examine. What is it that God has told you? What is it that God's word says concerning what he told you? And set everything in order according to the word and what he said. Absent. Of all the glory that you're getting from man. All the affirmations you're getting from people. Because if you go back into this scripture. You will see originally. When you go back up. That David. Before he moved the ark. He consulted with all Israel. And everybody said yeah. 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 But he did not consult God. Saints, friends, and faith walkers, let's consult God in all that we do. Let's go back and examine even the things that God has told us to do. Let's do our first works again. And let's, let us not despise small beginnings. Let us get in the will, the perfect will of God, and be obedient to all that he does and all that he says. Remember, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. We don't want to be that person that's doing things that seem right to ourselves, that seems right to other men, but it's leading to death. There is no growth. There is no prosperity. There is no fruitfulness in the things that we're doing. Let's go back and examine it if that's the case. And let's continue to seek God and give him all praise, all honor, and all glory in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.